what you call your real big budget spectacular finish. Hey guys, hello gorgeous. Welcome to the 12th episode of the 80s Toy Museum Virtual Tour Series. And for this final part, we're going to head down to where most play sets were kept in the 80s. We should be near the surface by now. On the floor. I'm all for displaying things on nice shelves or in glass cabinets with lighting that complements the sculpt. But some play sets are just too big to display like that. After all, they're called play sets, not show sets. Let's start with this legendary mystical structure. Castle Grayskull. There it is, Castle Grayskull. The original version is on my Vintage Masters of the Universe shelf, but this gargantuan updated version resides on the floor in front of my classics collection. Our new home! No way, Bone Brain. Only He-Man possessed the power to open the jaw bridge. By the power of Grayskull, I command the jaw bridge. Open! Even though the classics line was more about detail than play features, this castle serves as a beautiful backdrop for figures, and even opens up to provide more display options. It may not fit on a shelf, but it's so huge, it has a shelf inside of it. I will control Castle Grayskull! Not as long as the most powerful man in the universe has something to say about it. Next time you might try knocking first. Then we've got some G1 Transformers playsets. There's Fortress Maximus. He's a triple changer, a robot, a fortress, and a battleship. Right now I've got him in his ship mode. Just makes it easier for Scorponok to throw him around. <laughs> and one of the coolest playsets of the 80s. Alert Omega Supreme that we need him. It's the Autobot defense base Omega Supreme with motorized tank. Omega ready. And rocket. Then we've got a bunch of G.I. Joe playsets, starting with the ultimate USS flag, which many of you have seen in the video I did for it last year. This flag is the result of a salvage operation, combining two incomplete beat-up USS flags. Salvage? What you just salvage out here in the middle of nowhere? A prize a quarter mile long and 20 stories high. The G.I. Joe aircraft carrier USS Flag. It may have seemed a little daunting to try to restore the largest playset ever built, but I took one look at all the parts strewn across my floor and said, She is definitely salvageable. After completing my USS Flag, I decided it sat too low to the ground, and using G.I. Joeberg's idea, built a custom lower level with wheels in order to hold more cargo and also give it some much needed mobility. So, they're trying to raise the flag. My biggest piece of advice to anyone undertaking this project is, don't give yourself a deadline. There's no way we can raise the flag in time. It's going to take a long time. Measuring, cutting, sanding, painting, and assembling. Be patient. Just look what it'll get you. You got it, Admiral. I certainly do. The ultimate USS flag is the crown jewel of my collection. Like Grayskull, it's a beautiful backdrop for modern or vintage G.I. Joe figures or vehicles. And it's got a few play features too. Cannons to keep Cobra at bay. We've been hit! And a microphone to bark orders to the crew. Tension all hands, tension all hands. Dinner's ready. It's Gung-Ho's Jambalaya Special tonight. It's no use, Admiral. I can't raise them. They must be trapped inside the flag. Although the sound might not travel very well depending on what type of wood you use for your custom lower level. And one upgrade I've made since that Ultimate USS Flag video is I've installed some color-changing lights in the superstructure. Despite all the windows, not a lot of natural light is able to get in here. So some overhead lighting is definitely a good idea. The flag is safe. Usually, but you never know when this behemoth is going to collapse into the ocean. 
And if that day ever comes, the Joes will be able to swim to safety to the nearby tactical battle platform. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! Swim for the battle platform! Compared to the other playsets, this one is pretty chill. Ah, party board to tears! Ah! Speak for yourself, Polly. I'm enjoying the relaxation. Not much to do other than fish or play games on the computer. Although it's got a bit of firepower if Cobra ever shows its ugly fangs. Now we're talking action! And if you run out of missiles, there's always harsh language. How fast, you scurvy swabs! <laughs> Beside that is the G.I. Joe Mobile Command Headquarters. Three levels of awesome Cobra fighting power. Nobody beats G.I. Joe, the real best hero! It's a transformer. Changes from giant tank to three-story headquarters and back. Playsets can be big, bulky, and immobile, so it's a big plus whenever one is able to move around with little effort. The next playset wasn't able to move around originally, but I built a similar base to the USS Flag. This pterodrome is now on wheels and much easier to roll out of the way. Mercer, you know the layout. How do we get in? In this stinking swamp, even big bad cobras need air conditioning. This cool cobra base has tons of storage space, a jail to temporarily hold your Joes until they escape, thanks to cobra soldiers' ineptness, computer consoles, and a fire bat that launches out of the middle of the base. Oh, We're ready for the Joes. Launch the fire bat. Too bad it's got about as much structural integrity as a matchstick house. Luckily, Cobra's got enough money and manpower to build them faster than a Tim Hortons. Cobra stuff, the right materials. Cobra stuff, the perfect home. Cobra Terrorism. Cobra Terrorism. Next up is one of the smelliest playsets of the 80s. Uh, where am I? It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sewer playset. Okay, luckily they didn't go the stinko route and make it actually smelly, but all of the slime and goop stickers all around it certainly give it a stinky atmosphere. This is seriously grossing me out. I guess turtles can't smell? It doesn't seem to bother them. Well, yeah, we don't get many humans down here. There's a number of play features like the TV next to the bed. We watch a lot of TV. Look like turtles, green smelly turtles. Turtles and my men have orders to blow them out of the sky. Who are these mystery turtles? Could they be aliens from another planet? Happy Hour News will bring you round-the-clock bulletins on the Green Menace. Ugh, fake news. And an area for training. I'm not doing a thing till we eat some serious breakfast. And we don't eat until we practice. Plus a number of play features above ground too. And finally, there's the real Ghostbusters firehouse. With some super fun play features like the spinning pole platform. And the ghost containment unit. Welcome to our 220 volt 10 megawatt ecto containment unit. Nighty night. Thanks to the mayor, this playset won't be going anywhere for a long time. The mayor just called! Our firehouse has been declared a historical monument! Nobody can touch it now! Many of us look back on these playsets fondly to the good old days. You know, you guys, I think the good old days are right now. I hear you, man. Here's what I love about vintage toy collecting. A lot of these playsets, vehicles, and figures were very well made and looked just like they did when they hung on the pegs or sat on the shelves of our favorite toy stores in the 80s. With so much in the world that breaks down over time, it's really nice to have something bright, fun, and colorful that's frozen in time. Each one a tiny time travel portal to an age of goodwill, optimism, enthusiasm, heroics, and nobility. That's why I love this stuff. And I'm glad to hear that there are thousands like me out there that feel the same way. So what if they get a little dusty after a while? That's easily remedied. Right, He-Man? Stand back! Thanks for watching and for all of the amazing comments along the way. 
Glad to hear that 80s magic is still alive and well within so many of you out there. And it's been my pleasure to help remind that it's not just about paint apps, articulation, accessories, or play features. It's about the indomitable human, or Eternian, or Cybertronian, or Amphibian spirit. This is my art. And by art, I mean the traditional definition of art. The expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. Typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture. Producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. That's what I and countless other nerds connect with. The emotional power that these toys, this art, represents. These characters inspired many of us greatly while we were growing up, and they continue to do so for me to this day, especially since many of the newer heroes don't have all that many traditionally heroic traits. Lacking these traits might be cool in the short term, but in the long run, virtues like integrity, courage, focus, empathy, respect, and loyalty are going to make all of life's challenges much more conquerable than being sarcastic and snarky, cynical. Don't believe me? Well, it's like I always say, time will tell. And I think these characters still resonate so powerfully with many of us because time has told. They're memorable not just because of their costumes or their powers, but because of their beliefs, their convictions, their actions, and their sacrifices, their service to others. And with that, my service to fellow fans who grew up in the 80s and looked up to these heroes is complete. The 80s Toy Museum virtual tour has come to an end. It was worth it just for the ride! It's been a blast and I'll miss you all. See you around. Just kidding. Well, here we go again. The Toy Museum virtual tour series might be over, but there's still lots of stuff to talk about, like taking a closer look at all of these amazing characters, as well as a few other mini museums that couldn't fit in this collection that we can take a look at down the road. But the channel can't grow without your help. Here's how you can contribute. You can either become a supporter on Patreon at various different tiers to suit your needs, and receive rewards like Patreon-exclusive video reviews, roundtable discussions with the rest of the Patreon tribe, and special missions review requests. And the other way you can support is by buying some of the new merch I'm offering on TeePublic. There's men's, women's, and children's shirts and hoodies of all styles, sizes, and colors. As well as other cool stuff like mugs, phone and laptop cases, or pillows. As the page says, each purchase supports an independent artist. That's me. I do everything on this channel myself, so I sure do appreciate the support of all the amazing viewers out there. So until next time, my friends, yo Joe, till all are one, by the power and the honor, cowabunga, and of course, Nerdmas Day. <laughs>